All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Rocky Vlogs. We are cutting it down to the wire. By the time you see this video, so long as everything went right, the iris will have already flown and I'll be at LDRS still. For now, we have to do perhaps the scariest part for me for all of this preparation, which is putting together the end motor. Why is it scary? Because there's six 98 millimeter grains that have to be glued into a liner. If I mess that up somehow, it's gonna get pretty bad. I'm a little bit gun shy just because once I saw somebody gluing an N5800 together and they managed to get one of the grains stuck halfway in the liner. I did glue together my M2050. If you guys have been watching for a while, you'll know that. But today, I'm gonna throw you guys into voiceover mode and I'm going to show you how to put together an Aerotech N2220 dark matter motor or any motor for the 9815360 case. Let's do it. Right off the bat, it's pretty easy to grasp the concept of why this is such a frightening process. It's all very big, which in theory makes things easier, but it also, not in theory, makes things very expensive. The retail price on this motor is $900, and while I got a great deal on it when I bought it, I was taking pretty excessive care to make sure that I didn't mess anything up. So the first step was to use paper towels to get all the dust out of the liner. I used a broom handle because I didn't have a big dowel. I spent a good amount of time on this considering that the propellant grains will be glued into the liner. I didn't want any extra dust left over there. The next step was to get out and unbox all six of the propellant grains. This is one of the more intimidating parts because uh, you mess one of these up, you ruin the whole motor. So carefully remove them all from the boxes and uh, the most important thing we do here is test fit all of them first make sure none of them are tight fitting in the liner you want them to be able to slide through relatively easily once confident all the grains were easily sliding through the liner I put on the manliest pair of pink rubber gloves I could get my hands on no pun intended and began gluing them in now you can see I actually got a decent amount of Gorilla Glue on the outside of the liner which isn't really that big of a deal. I just sanded it off before completing the installation of the motor. The trick here is to apply a thin layer of glue over the propellant grains casting tubes without getting any glue on the actual propellant itself. It's a little bit of a trick. It's kind of intimidating, like I said, but uh, with a little careful due diligence, anyone can do it. The next step to uh, getting this thing ready to fly is the electronics bay. Now I had my little brother design and 3D print these amazing sled adapters so that I could use the sled from my 5 inch Wildman Punisher and uh, basically just put it into the adapters and then use the adapters as mounts for the 3 8 inch all thread in the iris, which was a really great idea. However, it seems that dumping the 5 inch Punisher with no main from 13,000 feet wasn't without consequence. My sled is destroyed, and that means we're going to take it from the top and build ourselves one out of plywood. However, if you're familiar with this channel, you'll know I quite enjoy the concept of working smarter and not harder. Or at least, that's the excuse I use to cover up my laziness in a lot of situations. In this case, it means cutting the plywood to exactly fit the 3D printed sled mounts that my little brother made me, and then just attaching the pieces of the sled that were left with the altimeter still mounted to them to the piece of plywood after the epoxy dried. After that, I just took a spare piece of the plywood I had sitting around and built a little stopper for 9 volt batteries, which, you guessed it, are going to get electrical taped to the sled. It works, and that's all we need. The next day rolls around, the propellant grains have had plenty of time to properly adhere to the inside of the liner, so it's business as usual for assembling an Aerotech rocket motor. You grease the O-rings, you grease the threads, they have a nice little sheen to them, and then you throw yourself a little, put one of those bad boys right in front of the seal disc, and then throw your forward closure on, and after you're done with that, throw another one of those bad boys over the nozzle, and put the rear closure on, and Bob's your uncle, you got yourself a ready-to-fly end motor. Now, while I'm fairly confident in my Kevlar anchors that I put in this rocket oh so many years ago, I decided to add what I call the Hail Mary strap. This rocket has a single piece of one inch Kevlar strap glued to either side of the motor tube to attach a shock cord to. But just in case, because I'm paranoid, I added a detention piece of shock cord that has about a foot of slack over the Kevlar leader 
So, should that Kevlar leader let go, there's a backup piece of Kevlar strap connected to the top of the motor case via a forged eye bolt. Redundancy is a good thing to have. To further combat this potential issue that's pretty much entirely made up in my head, I've added three sets of soft brakes to the shock cord because we've got so much to spare. I don't want pretty much any stress being put on the joint and really just would like the Kevlar leader to basically only have to put up with the weight of the rocket when it's under shoot. I know I built it pretty strong and the intent was for it to be able to take a good jolt, but why bother putting it through it if we don't have to, right? So I wanted to get you guys some really good onboard footage of this flight. So my little brother 3D printed me this camera hood. And after seeing how the hard hit from no main in the 5 inch uh, cracked the sled, I decided to throw a layer of fiberglass on it, which does put me back a little bit. Because I was hoping to paint this white to match the rocket where it's going today. But now we're going to wait for this West Systems epoxy to dry. And uh, I think my dad's going to bring it with him. So, uh, yeah, I just gotta make some ejection charges and I think that's it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you've seen me make ejection charges before, so I'm not gonna put you through that again. We're doing six for the fin can with an eight backup and eight for the main chute with a 10 backup. Um, end motor's in. I'm getting uh, pretty stressed out and nervous because this is a pretty expensive one relative to a lot of my other flights, but it's long overdue. I think the iris is going to handle it just fine. I'm really paranoid I put the motor together wrong even though it's the exact same as 75s and I've done it before and didn't have any issues. It's just big. It's intimidating but all said and done we should be pushing the iris close to 10,000 feet. The Bonneville Salt Flats. If you're going to be at LDRS come find me. I got uh, Rocket Vlog stickers that I'll give out for free. I was going to make some AVP CP ones but I just don't have time. So uh at any rate, thank you guys for watching, and uh, we'll see you at LDRS.